Maryland Parks Department. Today we're talking about Riverwatch. Brooke, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. Good to have you here. Now, tell us all about uh, what Riverwatch is. Riverwatch is a volunteer program. We teach citizens how to be scientists to monitor water quality in their area. Okay. Uh, I think we have some pictures we're going to show here. Sure. And you can describe some of these to tell us uh, what's happening. Okay, great. All right. That's me uh, in the water testing for macroinvertebrates. Okay. And so you scoop up some yep. of the water. This is me doing some chemical tests for um, pH. All right. And uh, this is a here? citizen checking the dissolved oxygen in the mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. This is a group doing a watershed model. Okay. These are some folks that have collected macroinvertebrates and they're putting them in the tub to ID them. All right, now I gather, and here's oh, some more volunteers. This is the last one is the turbidity tube. They're looking at the clarity okay. of the water. Okay, and now you in, you train volunteers to do this. Uh, yes. You really rely on volunteers yes, to this, do this. Yes, this program is entirely volunteer based. Mm -hmm. So the DNR, um, Division of Fish and Wildlife, trains folks like myself to go out and train citizens and also teachers are a common group that come to our program so they can use it in classrooms too. And why do we need citizen scientists to do this? Why can't the DNR do this on their on their own? Well Just quite simply it's a massive undertaking. There's mm -hmm. so many waterways, streams, creeks, lakes in Indiana it would be impossible to, to monitor all of okay. them. Now what's involved with the uh, training program if there are some potential volunteers out there that sure. want to find out about it? Sure. It's an eight hour program so you do have to be willing to commit the day. Mm -hmm. We teach folks how to do some chemical tests okay. and, and biological and tests. And you brought a chemical kit here. Yes. Let's, uh, this show is people. one of them. So what what's included in this kit and what happens? This, with this? is the dissolved oxygen test so okay. what we do is we sample the water with this test and then what we do is we have a chemical reaction and it, we will compare on the color line there yeah. to determine how much dissolved oxygen is in the water okay and you have a couple other things here this uh, this uh, net device <laughs> yes that is called a dip net and you actually okay. put it in the water and drag it along and you collect macroinvertebrates which are little bitty critters that live in the water okay and we ID them and help determine the biological health now of this the device water. looks like something I saw in a dorm room once yeah. in college what, the, what, <laughs> what is this yes this is called the turbidity tube the turbidity tube. turbidity what tube is turbidity? it's the clarity or cloudiness of the water okay so if you look down in there yeah. there's a black and white disc Oh yeah, I see. So it. when it's okay. filled with water, you determine how clear the water is. Okay. So what kind of skills uh, do people really need to have to become citizen scientists? What are you looking for? Well, when we teach this program, we're looking for interested adults. Mm -hmm. They have to have at least the physical ability to get down to the water and do the tests. Mm -hmm. They have to have basic math skills. You don't need to be a genius to do this. Mm -hmm. And you have to have basic computer skills because once you do the tests, you enter the information on the Hoosier River Watch database. Okay, so how can people get involved? What's the first step? The first step, one, I have a class coming up. It's mm -hmm. on April 28th at St. Patrick's County Park. Mm -hmm. If they want to, they can register with us by April 16th for that. Mm -hmm. There are other local ones. There's one coming up April 18th in Goshen and one May 19th in Bristol. So there is a website that folks can go to for a calendar to find a workshop locally. Right. And they can also call and email for okay. that. That What's that website? The website, that's a really long one. I, oh, okay. I, uh, yeah. Well, you know what, we'll put a link at our yeah. website yeah. and we'll have information on that. Um, you know, I, I wanted to find out, uh, how, how long have you been doing this, by I've the way? I've been doing this since 2005. Yeah. I first learned about this sort of activity when I was in college and wanted to apply it in my work as well. Mm -hmm. And people, uh, they, it's probably fun to do some of this, right? Do you do it mainly during warm weather months or is it year round? It is year round. Most people do it in the warm weather months. Mm -hmm. I actually had a student I helped do a project for science tests and t science fairs and he actually was testing in the middle of winter so oh we were out in very cold temperatures <laughs> doing the water test then too so that must be a challenge <laughs> oh my goodness that was a challenge yes yeah do you dig down I mean if, it, if the river is iced over where you are you yes. you bore through the yeah, ice yeah we had to the... do that mm -hmm. well very good yeah well, it's an interesting program yeah and it is it's I, a lot of fun Brooke thank you for thank you for coming in and